afternoon. It's always really good to have the after lunch slot, don't you think? So I'm going to talk about what's not in our slides because I think you can read what's on the slides and I think there's some other learnings for us that have been really valuable through the collaborative. So as you can see, we've been really, really specific with our target. We've said we're going to reduce our constipation rate from a baseline of 50% to um, less than 38%, which is a 25% reduction. Now, those are really interesting figures and I have to thank Prem for those figures. Um, and so this is one of the things I want to talk to you about. When we started this project, we were babes in the wood when it came to um, the methodology of quality improvement. We'd all done the IHI open campaign. It took me about five attempts to do the statistical stuff and the run chart stuff, and I still need to refer to it on a daily basis. Um, when Prem had a teleconference with us about our specific, um, our setting our target. He was very kind of clear around, how did you set the baseline? And I gave one of my classic answers. Well, I put the X in the fourth square down from when we first started collecting data, and that gave us our mean. Um, which was a pretty naive answer, but that's what we're using. Um, and I guess we tested our baseline quite rigorously um, through the first start of the, of the project. So we also did our, um, our scope, included two different areas. So we are a DHB with a two hospitals, sister hospitals, and so we chose to do it across two sites. Um, one is a quite large orthopaedic ward in Tauranga who has predominantly older population, often acute, probably 50-50% acute elective, um, and the other is a smaller surgical ward in Fokotani, which has an average length of stay of two days. See what the problem will be if you're looking for three days of constipation. Um, we did lots of interventions. This is just a little handful of them, and I guess one of the things that we've learned from the project has been how to capture our ideas and some of the learnings of the ideas that you use. So I've got a couple of theories or uh, methodologies I want to talk to you about today. Oh, I wanted to get to our successes and achievements. That's okay, I'll talk about the methodologies now. Um, my first methodology I want to talk to you about is the Scrum methodology. And this was the um, process that we developed in response to how Elizabeth referred to, the lack of time and resource to actually do anything in terms of meaningful change. And so our scrum methodology um, is based on the All Blacks, and it's a touch, pause, engage approach to quality improvement, where we would meet and brainstorm a whole lot of ideas, we would take the ideas away, we would think about them, and then we would engage with what was practical and realistic in terms of using. It's been quite successful, but it's been quite hard to capture in PDSA cycles, um, which leads to my second part of the methodology, and it's called the um, chaff and wheat methodology. And that's related to brainstorming, because when you're working with a project group that's very diverse, and we've got pharmacists, quality improvement people, pain nurses, we had orthopaedic registrars at some points, there were lots of ideas. Now, you know that when you brainstorm that every idea is of value. I want to suggest to you that some of the ideas are chaff, and you actually use them to nurture and grow the wheat. But you have to learn when it's time to blow them away and leave them on the, um, on the floor. Um, some of our chaff ideas were quite interesting. Um, we went through a phase where we thought, oh gosh, we could just put everybody on laxatives. Not a good idea. <laughs> The other kind of methodology which I'm sure we've all shared in as a collaborative is that don't recreate the um, wheel methodology. And I want to thank Counties Manukau for their patient information leaflet, which we have also pirated, but we have acknowledged them on the back of it. Um, so how are we doing? These are our graphs. This is... Um, Documentation. So one of our first challenges was to get the information that we needed to know where the patients were constipated. Um, and so this is our run chart from um, January this year to um, the last entry, I think, was October. Um, and it shows that we have got a run or a trend or a special cause variation or something going on um, <laughs> that we will um, anal an analyse <laughs> when we get it on our S whatever chart. Um, this is for us the proof of the pudding, and this is constipation incidence. And as I said, we had an aim of reducing our constipation incidence from 50% to less than 38%. And <laughs> except for one, what are they? Outlier thing there. Looks like we're getting a run there as well. 
So we're pretty happy with this. And yeah, as I said, this is a month ago. We've now got another couple of data points on here, and we're starting to feel quite confident that we might be um, getting there. So the lessons learned and the things that we've achieved. Um, I've written some up there. Um, the ones, though, that I think were probably that I want to talk about that aren't on the slide are the challenges of working across two different sites with two different teams, two different patient types, two different cultures within the organisation. The other challenge for us with constipation is being our harm area, as constipation is seen as a nursing problem. And boy, has it been really hard to engage orthopaedic surgeons in the constipation prevention regime. It's been really easy and good to um, engage with anaesthetists, with clinical pain teams, and with the juniors, but really the orthopaedic surgeons, I don't know. Has anybody here in the room ever seen recently an orthopaedic surgeon actually prescribe something? <laughs> Doesn't happen very often. Um, and I guess the other thing for me was it was a cross culture for me because I'm the nurse leader of the medical service so I don't usually work with surgeons and firstly they're going what are you doing in my ward and secondly they're going and what are you doing looking at my patients charts. So that was interesting. Um, the other thing that we learned was around consumer engagement, and we were so proud of ourselves at the very beginning because we had a consumer in our group, and it was going to be really, really good, you know, to have this consumer in our group, and her story was was really valuable. However, we found that our consumer came with her own agenda, and that was, you know, we worked through that, and her agenda was actually to get a job in the DHB, which she successfully did, so that's cool. <laughs> We found the best consumers to engage with were the patients in the beds. And boy, can I tell you some stories from auditing. I went into the orthopaedic ward to audit one day, and this lady said to me, she said, you know, what are you doing here? I said, I'm just here looking at your bowel chart and seeing whether you know, they've documented your bowel. She said, oh, she said, I'm so worried. She said, I haven't been for five days. And they've been giving me all this stuff, and I still haven't been. And I'm going to theatre at one o'clock this afternoon. And I'm going, I'll be right back with you. So the reality and the number of times that patients actually asked me and thanked me for asking them about their bowels was really, really affirming. The other thing, that big thing that I've got to mention that we got from our consumer was the word poo. Um, and if you have a look on our, our consumer, our, our education leaflet, we've used the word poo. Um, struggles, like everybody, quickly, quickly. Um, getting clinical leads engaged, um, learning the PDSA methodology and documenting it. Um, when I look at our PDSA cycles, we did about five cycle for every, cycles for everything that we actually collected. Um, low visibility of what's going on, I also found that really hard compared with falls and some of the other projects. Successes, we're getting there. That's it. Thank you.